Hello and welcome to Saturday morning here in Northern California. And today, what I plan to do is go out for a traditional road ride. And it has been a while since I've ridden my road bike, so I'm gonna take it out, dust it off, and go for a road ride. And for those of you who have been following along on my channel know that for the past couple of years, I have been exclusively riding this Fitz Cycles custom steel randonneering bike. And so it's been, it's been a great bike. I love this bike, but today I just have this craving to want to get on my road bike and just feel what it's like to ride on skinny road tires on a very lightweight bike. Now this bike is really easy to ride. It has, it's a little heavy, but it is really easy to ride. It has the nice, wide, comfortable tires. It has fenders. It has a front rack for a small handlebar bag. It has a dynamo powered headlight and taillight. So if I get out there and it starts getting late, I never have to worry about lights. It has really nice, um, it has a really nice rear saddlebag on it with a repair kit and patches and tubes. And it even has the pump mounted on the frame. And so for me, it's really easy to just want to grab that bike and go. And in fact, um, I love it so much that I've put quite a few miles on it over the past couple of years. It's coming up on its two year anniversary. And those are the original wheels that are still on it. They have over 12,000 miles on them. And they were the wheels that Omar built for me when we put this bike together at All Rounder Cycles down in Emeryville. And so I can't say enough thanks to Omar and to all the other people who've helped me put this bike together and the companies that supplied the parts for this. And of course, John Fitzgerald for building such an awesome bike for me. So thank you guys so much. All right, so I do have a few things before we head out that I want to update all of you on, those of you who've been watching my channel. Uh, I want to update you on this Wahoo Element. Now, this is the Wahoo Element Rome. This belongs to Miss Cools. She paid full retail price for this. And as some of you know, you watched a video called my, it was my 400K attempt video. And in that video, I wanted to go out and attempt to do my first solo self-supported 400K ride. And I wanted to do it over the holiday weekend and that was the last week of December and during that week there's an event called and I'm sure a lot of you know it's called the Rafa Festive 500 and so my plan was to just go out and do a really fun long self-supported solo adventure ride and I had planned this really cool route it had a lot of climbing it was probably a little more difficult than I should have made it but I I just wanted to check out these areas and these little towns and roads and this route was just I had really thought about this route for a long time. I've been thinking about how to make it work and how to connect all these different spots. And so my plan was to do that over, over the Rafa Festive 500 holiday week. And I wanted to use the Wahoo Element Roam that Miss Cools purchased because it has a really nice routing and navigation feature on it. And for those that watch that video know that the, I had a problem with the battery on the first day the first attempt to do it. So I attempted the ride twice. The first day we had a battery problem. I thought I didn't, I know, I thought I didn't charge it, but I know I charged it. All kinds of things happened with the battery. It wasn't holding its charge. I tried to recharge it along the way and it was just causing me to have to stop a lot. And the more stops you make, the longer it takes to do the ride. So it just got overwhelming. And I finally said, look, I'm gonna go home, re regroup, and redo this ride when things, when the technical stuff, the technical glitches are sorted out. So the following day, we took the Wahoo out for a ride and Miss Cools took it this time. And sure enough, the battery was not holding a charge. And initially I thought maybe I screwed up the battery because it was cold that week. I thought maybe having it out in the cold that early in the morning did something that damaged it. You know, I was prepared to replace it, fix it, pay for whatever I needed to do. Because I suggested, I was the one who initially suggested to Miss Cools to get this one out of all the other options. Because I said, I think this is going to be the best one for her. And uh, anyway, the reason I'm talking about this is because 
Miss Cools reached out to Wahoo and uh, asked if we could send it back and have them evaluate it and we will pay for the, the damages and pay for the repairs, whatever it was gonna cost. And I'd pay for it, uh, that was on me. And uh, Wahoo actually, to our surprise, they just fixed it and sent it to us. They did, there was no questions asked. And uh, so that's why I'm updating you because normally I don't do a lot of product uh, review video. I don't do a lot of product reviews because uh, I'm kind of a little cautious when it comes to doing it. But when a company stands behind their product, I'm happy to share that experience because I really appreciate it. And I know that a lot of you guys are watching are trying to decide, should I get the Wahoo, the Garmin, the whatever, right? So I want to say thank you to Wahoo. And I do think this is a nice device. I do stand behind that I do think this has the best, what, what, what I could find anyway, the best navigation feature. Uh, at least at the time when we purchased it, this one did. And so I'm excited that it's back and it's working. And uh, so I'm gonna take it again today. I'm gonna try not to break it. I'm not gonna drop it. Uh, and I'm gonna do my best to take good care of it because I know if I break it, Miss Cools will be you know, disappointed. But I'm gonna see if I can hook up my heart rate monitor I know that heart rate monitors can be hooked up to these. So that's what we're gonna do. Try to hook up my heart rate monitor and take out this Wahoo. We're gonna ride my road bike. So that's what we're doing today. Okay, and one more update. I wanna say thank you. I wanna send out a huge thank you to one of the viewers of my channel who went out of their way to make a patch. This is the Rafa festive 500 patch for 2020. Now I know you're out there thinking, wait a minute, how come I didn't get a 2020 patch for Rafa festive 500? And that's because Rafa didn't do patches this year. So one of the viewers, and I, I'm gonna keep, uh, I'm gonna keep it anonymous because I'm not sure if they want me to say who it is, but I'm gonna say thank you, you know who you are. This is a beautiful patch. I love the color combination here, this blue, yellow, and orange. Really came together. It has a really nice 70s feel to it. I really, really think this is really cool. So I'm gonna hold on to this. I'm gonna take good care of it. And uh, anyway, so I wanted to share it because I know that uh, people go, pe there's a lot of amazing people out there and this is one of them. And thank you very much. And I will hold on to this patch for as long as I can, so thank you. All right, without more discussion, let's get ready and uh, let's go get my road bike ready and uh, let's just go for a nice little road ride today. If you guys are still watching, feel free to join me and uh, yeah, let's go. And I should say Miss Cools is not gonna be joining us today. Sorry to let you all down, but she will be back soon. She will be on the next video, hopefully, so stay tuned for that. All right, so today we are going to be taking this seven cycles bike, and I will have to wear my road shoes because this one has road pedals on it. Uh, it has these CO2 cartridges, uh, which, you know, I don't use those. I used to use those a lot more, but now I've kind of gone towards using the pump for the big volume 650B tires on my other bike. But I will bring a CO2 adapter for this in case we get a flat. And I'll also bring a little pump, a little hand pump as well and some patches. But just to give you a little overview, this bike has a 28C tires. These are the Continental 5000 GPs. And I have to put some air in them because it's been a while. I haven't ridden this bike. I'm going to just check it over real quick before I take it out. Um, I did do this little kind of makeshift clamp here with the rear light. And this is just one of those Velo orange water bottle uh, mounting things that you can put on like a frame that doesn't have bosses. So I just used one of those and clamped it on here really carefully. As you can see with a screw. And then I have the tail light. Uh, this has a Sele Italia saddle. This is a good saddle. I, I do like this one. Uh, this is also the Sele. This is the flight. This one's really narrow. This was on my on my kind of on my racing bike here, but this saddle is nice too. It's a little narrower. And then this one, it's the same brand. 
It's got the cutout as well, but it's a little wider. It's a really comfortable saddle. This has a mountain bike. I put a mountain bike stem on it. And this is the uh, Richie carbon bars with the back sweep to them. I don't know if you can see that. This has this kind of a sweeping back feature. And it has, they're a little bit kind of ovalized, so they have a nice hand feel. But these bars are wide. They're like 42s. And I have since been riding my rando bike with the 38s. And I really like the narrower handlebars now. So that's probably something I'm going to change soon is the handlebars. I want to get narrower bars on this bike. Um, and these are also probably 42s. I, I should measure them. Maybe these are 30. Maybe these are 40s. I know on this Specialized, I was curious. I rode a little bit narrower, but I think these might be 40s and these are 42s. But uh, anyway, so we're going to ride this bike today. This bike is uh, really nice. Got these Shimano, you know, aluminum wheels. So they're not anything special. But this bike's good. It's a good road bike. It's titanium and I love it. You're probably wondering what pressure I'm going to run. So I'm going to go to 65 on the rear. Okay, and then we're going to go with uh, 60 on the front. These are 28 C tire. So I try to run them a little lower than I would 23s. Something else I should mention on this bike that's different than my touring bike is the crank set and the gear ratios here are different. This is a compact crank with a 175 millimeter long crank and an 11 to 32 rear cassette. This is 10 speed. It's a rear, the Altegra rear derailleur, Altegra crank set. And uh, this is nice. It's typical road gearing. I'd say the 32 in the back might be the only thing that's slightly, you know, not true to road road riding but close close it up and for the riding I do around here with all the hills this does help and on the front this is a 34 inner ring and a 50 outer uh, so it's definitely a road bike this works fine on this bike because it's so light that the gearing feels similar to my rando bike with the extra weight uh, if that makes any sense Hope that makes sense. So I'm gonna grab some water bottles here and uh, get a patch, grab a couple tubes and some patches and then let's get on the road. Okay, let's see how this fits nicely on here. Wow, that's cool. Turn it on. Wow, that fits on there great. Nice and centered, super aero. <laughs> All right, we got the water bottles. What else? Got put a little bit of that squirt chain lube on. That's the wax base kind. It's pretty nice. And check the brakes. Everything's good. I looked over the fork, made sure I didn't see any cracks in it. Haven't ridden this in a while. It's a carbon fork, but it's a little bit little weave. You can kind of see where they messed up the layup of the weave here, but that's probably okay. Uh, so yeah, I'll probably be swapping out this fork soon enough. I've got an NV fork to put on here. And yeah, so I think the bike's ready. Grip to, bar tape's a little messed up. And oh yeah, I've got to check to see if it'll work with my heart rate monitor. Okay, there's a couple there's a couple of other little interesting things that are different about this bike. And uh, one thing is, is the saddle height. So on this bike, my fitting, when I originally got fit for this bike, we set this at 78.5 centimeters for the saddle to center of crank dimension. I run a little lower on my rando bike. I run it just a millimeter uh, lower because I want a little bit more of a comfortable position on it but for this bike I have a longer crank and a higher saddle so this position is definitely a little more aggressive uh, so I just wanted to point that out because I know people have said on comments they're like oh you you're taller than me but your saddle heights the same so I just wanted to point it out that this is a more aggressive position that I ride on the road bike and I do a less aggressive position on the rando bike so 
there's probably, you know, there's some arguments there that could, could be made, whether that's good or bad. And I'm not gonna say that this is the right way to do it. This is just the way I've been doing it, so. All right, so we're coming to the top of this first climb. I've been riding now for one hour. Exactly, 59.37 and 9.5 miles. My heart rate monitor has finally stabilized. When they first start, they kind of jump around until they settle in and they get a little sweat built up. But now it's holding really well. I've been trying to keep it under 150 beats per minute. And this climb is roughly 2,500 feet elevation. Excuse me. So, it took me one hour exactly today trying to keep my heart rate under 150. Normally, I do this climb, it takes on my other bike, on my touring bike, because it's a little heavier, it usually takes about an hour and five minutes about at that same effort so the weight makes so there's the difference right there I guess the difference is about five minutes over an hour on a climb uh, but on the flats I would say it's marginally the different that extra weight might slow you down a little but uh, a lot of people are concerned about the extra weight and I've found that it just doesn't make that much of a difference I mean this bike is about 18 pounds right now so it's considered very light it's a road bike not the lightest road bike but it's light and then the touring bike or the rando bike is 25 pounds so you know five minutes difference over an hour on a 2500 foot or a little over 2,500 foot climb. So it doesn't make that big of a difference. Now, if you're racing, of course, you know, marginal gains and all that stuff. But just to go out and ride and train and have fun, I don't know, it doesn't seem to make a difference to me. So here we are, we're now going to head down. We got about a 1,200 or 1,500 foot descent coming up. And uh, here you can see the time is one hour and two minutes. The heart rate right now is 113, but I've been trying to keep it under 150 on the climb. We've gone 9.9 uh, .9 miles, and average is 9.6 miles per hour. But I don't have the elevation yet on this. I don't know, I have to add that to the menu somehow. Uh, we literally just pulled this back out of the box and haven't really messed with it too much. Car commercial. Woohoo! So I decided to stop here for this coffee and uh, I was gonna go a little further. It's such a beautiful day today, but what made me stop is there's a lot of traffic out this late in the day on a Saturday. And I just, I was gonna go south on one down the coast a little further, but there's just a lot of traffic. So I think it's better to just start earlier next time. I screwed around all morning just like getting the bike ready and stuff so 
That's right. <clears throat> All right. Well, we just made it back and uh, that was a good ride. That was a really fun ride. Uh, it, I didn't go as far as I had planned to. I only went 32 miles, 3200, 3200, 3300 feet total elevation. And my average speed was, I believe, 14.5 miles an hour. So the reason I mention that is because I think one of the interesting things about riding different bikes is some bikes feel a lot faster, but the actual reality is that it's not as fast as you think. And with this bike, I was figuring I was going a lot faster, but I wasn't. I was only averaging 14.7. I did stop once at the coffee shop and restarted. So there's a little bit of a loss in average speed due to that. But uh, the total ride time was two hours and nine minutes and uh, my average heart rate, and that was the other thing, I, I did try to keep my average heart rate as low as possible. It was 140 beats per minute, so a little higher than I wanted to. I think I was trying to stick to 135 average, so about five beats per minute higher. And uh, one thing I will say is, at the top of the climb, I just figured out something when I was riding back here when it comes to climbing and when it comes to bike weight. You know, we put a lot of emphasis on the weight of our bike. And sure, a light bike feels good, it feels faster, it feels easier to go uphill. But what I noticed is, when I got to the top of the climb, and I've done this climb multiple times uh, over the years, I, I usually, on a light bike like this, I usually average about, it takes me usually 55 minutes to get to the end of the road, it's nine miles, and it's about three, it's 2,700 feet of climbing, something like that. So when I ride this bike, I usually do it around 55 minutes. And when I ride my heavier bike, it usually takes me about an hour and four, hour and five minutes. So it's a little bit slower. It's about 10, it's usually, it's about five to 10 minutes slower. Well, today I rode this, it took me in an, exactly one hour. And over the past few weeks of doing that same route, it's been taking me about an hour and four to an hour and five minutes on my rando bike, which is about seven or eight pounds heavier than this is. It weighs around 25 pounds and this weighs around 17, 18. But what's interesting is on that climb, and the reason I'm mentioning all of this is that that eight to 10 pounds means about five or six minutes different over that whole hour of riding. Anyway, um, I could talk about this forever. I'm sure so many of you out there have kind of fallen asleep. You've clicked off this video. So uh, thank you to those who are still here. I really appreciate it. And I really appreciate that everyone um, has been following along on this channel. All right, well, anyway, thanks for watching and I will see you later.